Hello you guys, so in today's video I'm going to be testing out four different cleaning hacks and I haven't tried these hacks out before but apparently, apparently they work quite well so I am hoping that is the case because I do think that if we're being honest with ourselves most of us probably have at least one of these items somewhere in the back of our tack room desperately needing a little bit of TLC and some love so I'm hoping we actually do see some good makeovers today and that you guys get some tips that you can actually take home with you. And let's be honest, most of us do have a bit of spare time on our hands right now. So it is a good time to do a bit of a spring clean and maybe tackle some of those crappier jobs that we kind of just put off usually. Item number one is a dirty and used cotton. Item number two is the white brushing boots that you desperately wanted but have never been practical. Item number three, we have the leather short boots I forgot I even owned and should never have worn while cleaning out the stables because they are now drier than an actual desert. Now lastly and probably most disappointingly I have the rusty, mouldy, greasy competition pads that I actually forgot I owned because I have not competed in so long. Now these two are probably the things that I'm hoping have the biggest makeover today because it actually makes me so sad at the state that I have found them in. All right, you guys, so on to hack number one, and apparently there is actually a very quick and easy way to get rid of stains on your cotton rugs. So all you're gonna need for this one is a can of Coke, laundry detergent, and a washing machine. So apparently Coke is very good for removing stains from fabric, which is mildly frightening considering a lot of us drink it. So um, should probably drink a little less. To give you guys an idea, I have actually already washed this rug previously, but I wasn't able to get rid of these weird oily stains on it. They're on both sides, but apparently Coke will get rid of oil stains, so let's see if this works. All you need to do is pop your rug in the washing machine like you normally would, pop in your regular detergent, and then before you start, you're also going to add in one can of Coke. You are then just going to run the washer on the regular settings that you would normally use, and apparently we are going to have a super clean rug at the end of this. So I'm just going to let that run for now and start up on some of the other hacks. And at the end of the video, we will come back to the rug and see the results. All right, so on to hack number two. And apparently this is the best way to clean white boots. Now my white brushing boots, I have to say I've honestly tried multiple different ways, but I have never been able to get them to look much better than what their current state is, i.e. like the in-ground dirt and things like that. I can never really get the stains out, but apparently the best way to actually clean these boots is with a pressure hose, and I actually have never tried that before. And if this one works, it'll be honestly life changing, in the sense that I can continue to buy white boots. So all you're going to need for this hack is a pressure hoser. I'm going to be using a Karcher today. If you don't own one yourself, then I would definitely recommend asking your dad, because I feel like every dad owns one of these. Another option, which honestly probably isn't doable right now because of self-quarantine, but when that is over, you could also take your gear down to your local car wash if they have those bays where you can self-wash. They usually have power hoses or pressure hoses in there that you can use, and I've definitely done that before, so that's another option. Now the steps for this hack are pretty self-explanatory. I just laid my boots down on the ground and started pressure hosing them. I would suggest though, if you do not have a driveway that is like a hard surface, like concrete, uh, don't do what I did and start hosing because you will start digging up your driveway. <laughs> Once I realized I was doing that, I just grabbed an old canvas rug, popped it down under the boots and just got to it. And as you guys can probably see straight away, the pressure hoser was working so, so well on cleaning the elastic and the fabric of the boots. And I think this shot here actually illustrates how well even one spray was working on these boots. The top left boot hasn't been hosed yet and you can see how much more dirty it is than the other three which are already starting to look really a lot wider. So you guys my brushing boots are now dry and I have to say I'm extremely happy with how these are looking. So in a normal case when I was washing these I was just popping them into the washing machine and I have to say they have come out literally like 10 times cleaner using the pressure washer so I think from now on I will definitely do that. And I have heard of a hack too. So if you do buy a new pair of white brushing boots, what you should do is get some of that spray. You know the spray that you get when you buy like a pair of sneakers that are white and it's like a waterproofing spray? Apparently that's really good to spray onto the plastic guards of the outside of your boot and that will help keep them whiter 
for longer. Obviously my boots are way too far gone at this point because I've had them for a few years now. But I think if I had started doing stuff like the pressure hosing earlier, I probably would have been able to keep these whiter for a lot longer than I have. Um, so yeah, so definitely would recommend getting the pressure hoser out because yeah, it worked just so well. On to hack number three, and apparently this is the best way to revive old leather boots that are looking a little worse for wear. So you will need a few things for this one. You need some newspaper or paper that you can use to stuff the shoe, shoe polish or conditioning oil, cloths, saddle spray, a tea towel, a stiff brush, a buffing brush, and an iron. So the boots I'm going to be trying to revive today are actually my old short boots. Now these got in a very, very bad state because last year I was wearing them constantly when cleaning out Peach and Tic Tac's stable. And usually I would definitely not wear leather boots to clean out a stable. I don't really know why I did it. The problem also being that I did not look after them at all. I wasn't oiling them or keeping them conditioned. So I have only myself to blame for the state that these boots are now in. So I'm so annoyed at myself because I really like these boots and I would like to keep using them. All right, so there are a few steps to this particular hack. So I'm gonna try and keep them as simple as possible. The first thing you wanna do is just grab your first shoe and you're just gonna stuff it with the newspaper or paper that you've got, just enough so that when you're cleaning it, it just maintains its shape. Then you wanna grab a stiff brush. I'm literally just using an old dandy brush and you're just gonna use that to remove any sort of clumped on dirt. The cats just can't seem to help themselves whenever I bring the camera out, they just come out of nowhere and just wanna be involved. I have to say, I was laughing quite a bit when I was watching this back because I'm low-key outing myself. I'm not just a crazy horse girl, I'm also a crazy cat lady, clearly. <laughs> Next you're going to grab your saddle soap and a damp cloth and just go over the boot and buff it out until it is clean. Now mine were particularly dirty so it did take a little while. Once you've cleaned the boot off you do just want to leave it for about 10 minutes just to dry off a bit. Next you want to grab your shoe polish and a cotton rag, I usually just cut up an old t-shirt. And you're basically going to start layering on the polish onto the toe of the boot just to start off with. And I probably did about six to seven layers. And once that was done, I then applied a couple of layers to the rest of the boot as well. And I'm not really buffing it in. I'm just trying to layer it over the leather. So I hope all of you guys are doing well. I know everything has been very odd for the last few weeks. Um, I have to say I'm so so happy that I am in a situation where I'm still able to have access to my horses because they are keeping me occupied big time. I've seen a lot of those memes go around where it's like, um, you know, like it took a, um, like a pandemic for me to realize that um, I already self-isolate. <laughs> I'm a little bit in that boat to be honest. I'm quite the introvert. I spend so much time with the horses and obviously I work for myself so I don't really come into contact with like other people that much um, in everyday life obviously my friends and things like that um, I am missing but it is funny that for me I feel like my daily routine has not changed too drastically which yeah I don't know if that's a good thing or not <laughs> I have to say though I have noticed that I have been talking to my cats like maybe a little bit more than normal <laughs> so could be you know craving a bit of um like social time right now I'm thinking but yeah, I really do hope that you guys are doing well. And if you do notice that the leather is sort of sucking the polish in a little bit more quickly than you expected, then feel free to add some more layers to it. Once you've got the layers down, you want to wait another 10 to 15 minutes to really let the polish sink in. You are now going to grab your buffing brush and just get to work. Now when it comes to buffing, I don't really have any secret technique or anything like that. You don't want to be too rough with it. But basically you just want to keep buffing until you get the finish that you're wanting and if you think you need to add a little bit more polish in at this stage you definitely can. I think I did a couple of times just onto the toe but I'm not kidding you guys I literally probably buffed this boot for about 10 minutes straight so that's sort of the amount of time that you want to be buffing. Alright, so stage one of restoring this boot is now done and as you guys can see I mean it still does look like a bit craggly but you know, looking better, and at first I was like, oh, it doesn't look as good as I kind of wanted it to. Until you compare it to <laughs> the other boot, look at the difference. <laughs> like, whoa. 
So you can see the toe is still like a little bit janky. So we're going to try and fix that next. Hmm. Now keep in mind, I'm not going to be able to get rid of the cracks. Once your boot is cracked, it's pretty much permanent. But apparently if you use an iron to steam the leather, you are able to get rid of some of the creasing. So that is what we're going to be testing out today. So the first step you're going to do is just grab your tea towel or towel. You're just going to pop a bit of water on it so that it's damp and you just want to lay it over your boot. You're then going to grab your iron and you're literally just going to start ironing your boot. Wherever the creases are, that's where you want to iron. One thing to keep in mind, make sure that you do keep moving the iron. Don't hold it on the boot anywhere for too long because you will burn your leather if you hold it on there for too long at too high of a heat. So the theory here is that the steam will cause the leather to warm up and expand and that will therefore push the creases out. But keep in mind, it did recommend not doing this too many times with your boots because it can damage them if you do it too many times because you are expanding the leather. Once you've finished ironing the boots, you want to just leave the towel on there until it's completely cooled and then you want to take it off. So you guys, here is the final result on the boots. Now, as you can see, these are definitely looking quite a bit different than what I started off with. Obviously these boots were incredibly damaged and cracked, so I wasn't expecting to be able to get rid of that, but I did just want to soften them up and actually start using them again. Like I said, I was at the point where I couldn't even get them on my feet anymore because they had hardened up so much. And I'm pleased to say that I now can actually get them on my feet. Now the steaming for me with the iron, I have to say, I feel like it did not work at all. As you guys can see, there are still definitely creases and things like that in these boots. I think maybe if you had a milder crease, it might work for things like that, but it's not really gonna help you out if you have super deep cracks like these ones. But I definitely think the layering of the conditioner and then the extensive amount of buffing definitely did work. Now, one thing I did find quite interesting is that this boot, I just used the cloth. On this boot, I used the brush, like the buffing brush. Even though this boot was the more damaged of the two, it has actually come up quite a bit more shiny and I put equal amounts of work into both. Um, so I would definitely suggest for you guys to use a buffing brush because it does seem to give you a more shiny, nicer end result in my opinion. Um, so yeah, and as you can see, like I said, this one is definitely the more damaged one. You can see it has a lot more cracks and creases, um, but yeah, it's come up a lot more shiny. On to hack number four, and this sort of is a two-parter, but this hack is going to help revive your white competition pads. I am honestly so, so ashamed of how my competition pads are looking. Now, if you guys have ever had to pin number holders onto your saddle pads at a competition, then I'm sure you understand that occasionally you will end up with rust on your pad. And mine are quite stained with rust because the last time I competed, it was pouring rain. But I'm hoping today that we can actually revive them because at the moment I'm feeling very sad about the state that they're in. So the first part of this hack is going to help us get rid of rust. You are going to need a lemon, detergent, and a washing machine. So what you want to do is grab your saddle pad and pop it somewhere flat on the ground. You then want to grab your lemon, cut it in half so that you can get the juice out of it, and you're just going to squeeze as much juice as you can onto any spot that has rust. And you really want to saturate it as much as you can. You're then going to leave it for 10 minutes to soak in. Once it's soaked in for 10 minutes, you then want to take it outside if you're not already and you basically want to let it dry up in the sun. And this is key, so you want it to completely dry in the sun as that's like part of the reaction that apparently gets rid of the rust. So while I let that dry in the sun, I'm going to start up on the second part of the hack. And the second part is if you have any mold spots or just general stains. So you can see on my saddle pads, I do have a little bit of dotting. So mold staining starting to happen. Obviously these must have been a little bit damp when they got put away. For the second part, you are going to need either a stain removing foam or vinegar, bleach, and a washing machine. So originally my plan was to actually do this part of the hack with vinegar. So apparently vinegar is really good at like soaking through fabric and really getting stains out, whereas bleach tends to sit on the surface, so it's better for like surface stains. So that's like the theory. But because everyone is absolutely panicking right now, I couldn't even get white vinegar at my supermarket. So instead, I have got this Power Fizz, which is essentially like a stain sort of bleaching thing. But apparently the foam is good at getting like actually soaked into the fabric. So we're going to see how this goes. Again, this one's pretty simple. You just want to grab your stain remover and just pop it on any stains or mold spots. 
And if you do go down the vinegar route, it's extremely similar. You just make sure it really soaks into the fabric. And again, it is for 15 minutes that you need it to soak in for. So now that I've started spraying this onto the saddle pad, I definitely would have preferred to have been using vinegar. I mean, they're all chemicals at the end of the day, but these ones obviously are quite harsh. And let me just show you guys when I spray it on. It is a foam. It says it's like a fizzing foam, but it reminds me of like a bubbling lava or acid or something like that. Bubbling acid. That's what it reminds me of. Just... Like, can you guys see it actually bubbling? <laughs> like it's literally acid. So um, hopefully it works. It smells very strong. I'm very glad I'm wearing gloves right now. Yeah, and I'm glad I'm doing this outside as well. Double check the instructions, of course, but on this one it says to let them soak in for 10 to 15 minutes. So that is what I'm going to do. It has now been 15 minutes, the bleach is soaked in, the lemon juice is now dry, so I'm going to pop these on a normal wash. Another note, make sure when you do put these into the washing machine, you do use a hot wash because you do want to kill any remaining mould. So I'm really, really questioning the lemon juice hack right now because the rust still appears to be on said saddle pad close up so you guys can see you may also notice that it's still yellow around the rust um, so it didn't get rid of the rust and now I've got a yellow stain on my white saddle pad so again I'm hoping the magic really comes through when this goes through the washing machine I'm gonna go track them in the dishwasher, dishwasher the washing machine now and I'm gonna let them dry overnight and then tomorrow morning we will check in with them and see if they're looking any better hopefully because at this point I feel like the pressure hose did more than any of the bleaching and I can still smell the bleach even though I pressure hosed it so hopefully we can get rid of that too all right you guys welcome back to the video I am so so happy to report that once these went through the washing machine the lemon juice stain thankfully disappeared I was so worried I'd honestly ruined these yesterday I was like why did I even start this video I'm so annoyed with myself but now I'm feeling much much more positive so I think that the PS of Sweden definitely came up the best I did put a little bit of bleach in the wash I wouldn't usually bleach too much of the horses stuff because I think sometimes they can be a bit sensitive for their skin but with my competition pads I obviously I do add a little bit just to try and bring the whiteness back to them this one came up amazing I think that it literally almost looks brand new again now the rust stains were probably the worst mark on the PS of Sweden saddle pad and I have to say 90% of the stain is actually gone, which I'm really pleased about. There's still about 10%, but by the time I sort of stand back here, I can't even see it. That being said, I think if I had jumped onto the whole lemon juice hack earlier, I probably could have gotten rid of the stain completely. So that would be my recommendation to you guys. Do as I say, not as I do. And if you get a stain or a rust stain or anything like that, jump on it quickly. Um, don't put it in the back of your tack room and leave it for six months because you won't be able to get rid of the entire stain. Now the weather beater pad also came up looking really really good i obviously used the lemon juice on this too so the rust stains are now gone i also used that sort of foaming bleach because i didn't have vinegar um, on the mold patches and also on these black stains from my riding boots and the mold patches are completely gone so that worked really really well and i'm really impressed with how faded these black patches are now i never expected them to completely go because they were so dark they've been there for a long time um, and such a light fabric but I'm really really pleased with what a difference that is it would have been really interesting to test the difference between the vinegar and this foaming bleach but obviously could not get my hands on any vinegar okay you guys on to the final reveal did adding a can of coke into the washing make my cottons come out any cleaner than normally and the answer no no it didn't I mean am I surprised I don't really know exactly what I expected I still have big oil grease stains on this cotton as you guys can see and let me just say 100% the cotton is very very clean it's come out amazing all the dirt and fur and things like that is 100% gone but obviously these are still very very much there my cottons come out this clean even when I just do a regular wash so in my opinion I think that the addition of a can of coke made absolutely no difference um, to the outcome of the wash 
So I wouldn't recommend wasting a can of coke on trying to get your horse's cottons clean because yeah, it's just not worth it. Now, if you guys do have any cleaning hacks of your own that you would like to share with us, please do pop them down below in the comments section because I think you all know as equestrians, our sport is very, very messy and we have a lot of gear to keep clean. I will have another episode of Equestrian Reacts coming out later this week. So please do subscribe so that you don't miss out on that one. And you can also follow me on Instagram and TikTok at hand.equestrian for more content from myself and my three horses. I will see you guys all on the next one. Bye.